Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about Carnegie Mellon's Masters of Science in Computational Finance. Uh, they were ranked as one of the two programs for the Fancy Quant Honorable Mentions 2022 programs. They received a badge as well, so the top two programs here, the only ones that I've fully reviewed inside and out, were Carnegie Mellon and University of Michigan. Uh, Carnegie Mellon, though, gets the well-balanced badge here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about why I like their program uh, what kind of makes them stand out. And of course, I'm going to point out some of the things I'm not the biggest fan of, but of course, there's no such thing as a perfect program. So to start off with here, how I do this ranking thing is a little bit fuzzy and I'm planning on keeping it a little fuzzy because I don't want programs to game the system here, right? If I tell you I'm going to use job placement rate and I'm going to use this number and that number, and then I add them up and I have weights with them, uh, schools are going to gain the system, which is already happening with the other uh, ranking systems out there. And I'm not a big fan of that. But the first piece here I have done is going to be student interviews. So I have interviewed two students. So by interviewing, I email them. I ask them for some feedback on the program, try to figure out what you like about the program, what you don't like about the program, which is probably the most important piece I'm looking at. Uh, but the program's done well. They said the career services are done fairly well. But the one thing that one of the students mentioned they did not like about the program was that there's just so much material to cover and the program is trying to cover as much as possible. And often it feels like you're just going too fast to cover everything. And this is somewhat of a con, but coming from a quant finance masters that I was a part of, uh, I get it. I understand what they're saying. And they understood as well that like it's kind of a negative, but it's so hard to cover every single piece of quant finance and take this <laughs> with some a little bit of information here that I did this back in 2012 to 2014 before data science was this big booming thing in the quant finance realm. Now you're tacking that on there. It is hard to cover everything. And part of this, as you'll see with the core courses as well, part of adding all this together is going to be it is so hard to cover all of the topics. And so Carnegie Mellon's is a quarterly program. So for a quarterly program, they're going to have three. So the courses are going to be shorter, but Carnegie Mellon with this structure, again, is able to cover a wide variety of topics because you're taking this in quarterly chunks here. So there's gonna be three basically quarters here that you take for classes. Uh, for a semester school, you're gonna have two of these. So other more traditional programs that are semesters are gonna have longer classes. So they can cover more material. But again, it's going to be kind of a pro and a con here. I like that they have the quarterly based on how their program set up, though, because the goal, I think, of Carnegie Mellon's is how do we drive in as many quantitative finance-related skills into students as possible. And so looking at this, I think this is a big advantage of the program. I'll list up here, too. These are the list of core courses. You can see some of these that kind of stand out to me, right? Things that are new, things that are old, things that need to be covered are going to be things like machine learning, and then, of course, you're going to cover traditional finance like fixed income and options and stochastic calculus for finance one and two. Uh, there's financial computing as well and risk management, which is somewhat of a newer topic as well, kind of thrown in here. So they're kind of doing a little bit of everything. Of course, there's time series in here. And there's macroeconomics for computational finance, which I'm a big fan of coming from an economics background. But I think the general core is kind of what you should expect from a quant program. I think they're hitting everything. Uh, I will mention that another thing too is it's through the business school. And yes, I have commented I'm not the biggest fan of business schools, but uh, Carnegie Mellon is teaming up with all the different departments here. So they're actually teaming up with university's math department, statistics, data science department, Heinz College for programming, and of course the Tepper School of Business, which is what they're located in. So they're trying to use expertise from all these different programs and leverage them to give you the best education possible here. And one of the questions I ask as part of the programs is what makes your program unique here? So part of what makes Carnegie Mellon unique is going to be that, well, it's one of the first, I think they say they are the first quant finance program uh, going back to 1994. Again, they have this blended kind of degree process here where it's going to be stats, math, basically computer science and business. And they're trying finance, right? And they're trying to get all this in together, but using expertise from all the different part departments here. So the advantage, again, of Carnegie Mellon's as you keep seeing throughout, right? They just have this well-rounded blend of classes, uh, of expertise. And so that's one of the big strengths that we're gonna see with this program. And that's why they got the well-balanced badge. Other key pieces here that I kind of look at is looking at career services. So there are many, many 
great academic programs that don't have good career services. Carnegie Mellon, though, has a really good career service program here, which is why they have high placement of students for jobs. Uh, I will note they have two campuses, one in Pittsburgh, one in New York. They have full-time communication development coach uh, to help students craft strong resumes and interviewing skills and networking and all that. So you're going to get some of that hands-on job placement that you're going to need. They did mention they're trying to actually match students based on student preferences. So I like this. It's kind of tailoring to the students. They're doing their best to put it together. Again, the job placement looks pretty good. They do have a report too. So maybe I'll throw a link below uh, with job titles and then reports of where they actually place students from the program. I really like this. This is very transparent for the students. You can see where their graduates are being placed. And of course, I went on to LinkedIn and snooped a little bit to see where their graduates are working at. Uh, I like it. I like where they're placing students. I like the design of the program. They seem to have good career placements here as well. And that kind of covers the program itself. Now, other things I looked at, things I don't like per se, is going to be the fact that I look at the classes and I look at the textbooks they're using for these courses. Again, I really need the core courses. Electives would be great, but the core courses where we're really focusing here. Uh, they had some good books. So, for example, C++ is Financial Computing 2. Uh, one of the books being used here is going to be Bjarn Strustrup. So, I believe he's the uh, founder of C++. Again, it's a book on C++ programming. You're using kind of the foundational books that we would expect you to be using on this. They're good quality books. Uh, the downside on this is that there is some books from publishers that I'm not the biggest fan of. Now, they're using these books from a programming perspective, which is completely fine for learning Python. I mean, these sorts of books from the publisher, I don't like the publisher. They've produced a lot of nonsensical garbage books in the past, but they seem to be good books when it comes down to technical skills on the pure programming side. Like, this is how you program. They're good at that. They're not good at making books, though, on, you know, quantitative things or data science applied to finance, and it's complete garbage. But the overall books they're using, they're decent books. They're the somewhat standard books I'd expect for many of the courses here. They're doing a decent job here. So quality-wise, class-wise, rigor-wise, it's really hard to see in these classes without physically sitting, you know, in person and looking through all the materials here. But I think they've done a decent job at setting up the curriculum, uh, choosing the textbooks, and teaching these sort of courses. And I will note there are four industry practitioners that are teaching at Carnegie Mellon's program as well. So I look at this. I want to see industry practitioners involved in some shape, some way, uh, because again, academia can get very high and mighty in their theory, and then yet the application is not really there. So. They've done good on that too with setting up the curriculum, bringing in good practitioners and teaching kind of the core basics you would want for a quant finance master's program. And then one final point here to kind of wrap up this video, uh, what degrees and majors do students hold that are coming into the master's program? So the reason I ask this is I want to ensure that what they say they're teaching and what students they're bringing in, that you're actually learning something, right? It'd be really dumb to bring in finance students and teach them finance or to bring in economic students and just teach them economics. Uh, sure, you can teach at a mastery PhD level, but I wanna see that the students coming in have a fair amount of rigor here. You have some good amount of kind of filters here that you're looking to kind of tailor the program to a specific type of student here. Uh, I will note their program, when this review is done, 48% uh, were math and statistics students for undergrads here. So if you're a math and statistics student undergrad here, you're going to do quite well for the application process as long as you have everything else in place. Um, again, GRE scores that they're going to have. The quant side is a score of 169. The verbal is 160. The GMAT score, I don't know why programs accept GMAT scores. I'm not a fan of this. Uh, but the total is going to be 723. Quant's going to be 50. Verbal is going to be 39. So it's going to be a little bit competitive here. Some things to think about. And I will note... So just going to wrap this up here. There are students coming in here from economics, business finance, computer science, engineering, physics, sciences, and 1% in social sciences here. But they've done a good job, I think, at kind of crafting this, bringing in a little bit of a diversity here within the class, but still kind of focusing on, you know, the core cohorts, really kind of focusing on the math and stats students and how to kind of bolster those students into a quantitative finance master's here. So to wrap this up, I really like Carnegie Mellon as that well-balanced program. I don't think it's going to be the all-star knockout program 
if you're wanting to be, you know, a stochastic calculus expert here. So if you want to go into financial engineering, you do or die have to be the world's best leading quant, extremely mathematical and super driven. Uh, I don't think Carnegie Mellon is going to give you that edge on it. It's going to give you the well-balanced well perspective here. So again, you can look at the employment report, which I'll put up here and I'll put a link to. You can see where the students are going. But they're going to give you a well-balanced set of skills here. I think you could actually leverage this and go into things like, you know, the investing side. You could go into things like banking on the banking side, do risk management, for example. There's going to be an assortment of jobs that are going to be open to you just because they have such a well-balanced background. And of course, Carnegie Mellon is extremely well known in the quantitative finance master's realm. They were, you know, on my list and kind of my radar when I was looking at schools back in 2012. And as I noted, they have been going since 1994. So they have the expertise, they have the experience, they do seem to be working with the industry quite well. So job placement should be a little bit better than other programs. And overall, I really enjoyed looking at their program. Um, I think they're doing a great job here. So if you're interested in applying to programs, I would definitely consider Carnegie Mellon. Anyways, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.